Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our Wednesday night online Bible devotional. As I always say, I'm always super happy that we can connect together like we do on Wednesday evenings, especially for those who are shut-ins, and so we're so happy that we can connect. I want to share a couple of announcements with you, and one of them is this Saturday, for those that are physically capable of joining us, we'll be having our men's prayer Bible study at 8 a.m. in the sanctuary at First Assembly, and that's this Saturday, 8 to 9 a.m. And then following our time of prayer and Bible study, they'll, uh, some of the men will be going to breakfast, and then some of the men will be going uh, on a hike to the Vital Links in Burbank, and then after the hike, going to Pinocchio's for a delicious Italian lunch. So men, uh, come and join us. It's going to be a great time. And then, of course, if you need to head home after the prayer Bible study, um, to get some of those honeydews done, go for it. But we're going to have really a great time together. So come and join us uh, this Saturday morning at 8 a.m. And then also I want to invite you to join us and be a part of this. This will be exciting. It's our neighborhood canvas for Easter Sunday. We've had 2,500 flyers that have been printed, and we'll be distributing those on the 16th at 10 a.m. We'll be out and about for about an hour and a half, um, unless we get into conversation with somebody, it may go a little longer than that. But we just want to touch base with our neighbors and invite them to join us for Easter Sunday. And then on uh, for our Easter season schedule at First Assembly, Palm Sunday will be on the 24th of March, 10.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. We'll have a special service, and it'll be a great time together. And then on Good Friday, we have our Good Friday Friday Communion service at 7 p.m. And that, again, is always a, a very, very meaningful time together. So come and join us for that. And then for Easter, two days later, for Easter Resurrection Celebration Sunday, 10.30 a.m. It's going to be a great day. At First Assembly, we have a special kids program happening. And then following the morning worship service and following the kids program, there'll be a, a, a fantastic Easter egg hunt that the boys and girls are just not going to want to miss. And so if you have some neighbors or some friends, uh, please invite them to join us for uh, Easter Sunday. It's going to be really a great day together. Well, I want to just share for a few moments tonight on how the gospel helps you stand your ground. How the gospel helps you stand your ground. The good news of Jesus Christ. And Ephesians chapter 6, verse, chapter 6, verse number 15, it says this here. On your feet, wear the good news of peace to help you stand strong. Now, I think that we sometimes can get into uh, disagreements and some hassles in our relationships where we just don't see eye to eye with someone or they do something to upset us or we've done something to upset them, but anytime there's a breach in relationships, whether it be in the home with sons and daughters or your spouse or friends or the boss at work, anytime we are out of sorts with those who are close to us in relationship with them, it makes us an easy target for Satan's attacks. Think about that for a minute and think about some of your history in walking with Jesus and being a follower of Jesus. Isn't it true when we have those rubs in our relationships that it just seems to, to open us up to the attacks of Satan? And it doesn't matter if your conflict is with God or with other people, or maybe your conflict could even be with yourself. It'll open us up in almost every area of our life to the attacks of the enemy. Now, I know one thing is for sure. I don't want that for my life, and I know you don't want that either. If you're fighting yourself or others or God, you can't fight against, against Satan in our community, in our city, our state, our country, or really in the world, across the, the, uh, this globe. You can't fight on a multi-front war effectively. You just can't do it because God just didn't make us that way. Conflicts really of every kind, they just leave us off balance, looking for something to hang on to, something for support, and searching for a firm footing. 
And that's why Paul, the Apostle Paul, in the book of Ephesians, he urges believers. He says, listen, on your feet, wear the good news. Wear the good news of peace to help you stand strong. Now, Roman soldiers, they had these things called hobnails on the bottom of their uh, shoes. And they were much like what we see in the NFL or college football or high school football, Pop Warner, whatever it is. They've got their cleats on. And on the bottom of their, their, uh, their shoes are those cleats, those little spikes that stick out. And what it does for the football player is it helps them with their agility. It helps them with their balance. It helps them with their cuts. It helps them with running. It helps them in every way. It brings balance to their lives. And, and just like the football player were the Roman soldiers, without them, the soldier would slip in battle, wouldn't have good balance, wouldn't be able to stand firm and hold their ground. And so without putting on the peace that comes from the good news of Jesus, you and I too will slip and slide our way through life. Think about it. Isn't that true? Paul is writing about three different aspects of peace. Peace with yourself, peace with God, and peace with others. And that peace that he's talking about is really is another word for it, is reconciliation. And you need it in all areas of your life, as do I. We all need that. And if you wake up each morning with peace in your heart, with yourself, you're at peace with yourself, you're at peace with God, and you're at peace with others, then you're, you'll find yourself uh, with strong footing. You'll be able to stand strong against the wiles of the devil, against Satan's attacks. Satan tries to attack your peace through worry. He tries to attack our peace through causing us to just be so anxious. And we can worry about anything, really. We can worry about our future. We can worry about our finances. We can worry about our relationships. We can worry about our job. We can worry about what others think about us. And when we worry, listen, when we worry, it means that some area of our lives are out of sync. In fact, most of the time, it means we're out of sync in each of those areas of our lives. I like to say it this way. Listen, your Adidas aren't laced up. You're not ready for the game. And so the scripture says, those who love your instructions have great peace. It's a powerful word from the scripture. Those who love your instructions have great peace. And listen, they don't stumble. And that's found in Psalm 119, verse 165. In other words, the more you love and obey God's word, the Bible, the scripture, the less you're going to be offended by what others say about you. The more you love God's word, the less you're offended by what happens to you and the less your walk will, with God and with the Holy Spirit at work in your life uh, will be disturbed. Choose Listen, let's do this tonight together. Let's choose to believe what God's word says about me, what God's word says about you and about others, and most importantly about God, so that you'll have peace that will help you. It will help you hold your ground. I want to encourage you with that passage of scripture, that, that verse tonight, uh, put on the, uh, the, the, uh, those shoes, that gospel of peace, and it will help you through the storms of life. Lord, we thank you again tonight for your presence. We thank you that you're with us. We just ask you, Lord, to, to bless our dear friends tonight in every area of their lives. But Lord, may they have put on the gospel of, the shoes of the gospel of peace. Lord, give them success in every area of their life lives, Lord, and bless their relationships. Lord, surround them with your divine presence, we pray tonight, and give them a good night's rest. And we'll thank you for it, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, amen and amen. God bless you, everyone.